Welcome to another edition of the Syncom Small Talk tutorial series. What we're going to get started with is looking at the specific products, VisualWorks and Object Studio, and today we'll be looking at Object Studio and taking an overview look at the basic tool set. And the basic tool set starts with the launcher, which is this tool that when you start Object Studio you see, and you see that we have a variety of menu options and a variety of toolbar options down here. Starting from the left, file gets you access to things like the file interface so we can build a new interface. We can start the GUI building tools up. We're not going to do that at the moment, but you can do that. You can also load a file or load an application. Load file is kind of an archaic thing. Typically, you would be using store, your repository tool, to load things from your version control system. If you go back far enough, Object Studio is a file-based system where you saved files, saved your applications out to disk and then loaded them. So pretty much leave that alone. Load application. I'll get to this in a few minutes. Loading applications is how you load major components into Object Studio from the outside. It's somewhat akin to the parcel manager in VisualWorks, the difference being that in Object Studio you have access to both. So there are Object Studio specific tools that you load this way, and there are tools that are common across Object Studio and VisualWorks that you would load using the parcel manager. And of course you can save the image. Using the edit menu you'll have access to the typical things you would have, open, edit, delete, and so on. The browse menu is more interesting. This is where you can browse the whole system, senders and implementers of things, look for a specific class or namespace. If you hit browse system, you'll get the system browser, common tool between VisualWorks and Object Studio. So if you're familiar with this from either product, this is the same tool either way. You're familiar with it already. You also get the same tool off here from tools class browser. So you'll get the same tool. And the reason it appears in both places is kind of a historic anecdote from when Object Studio is an independent tool, the tools menu is where you typically went for that. So, kind of a throwback to the way things used to be. Going further down the tools menu, you'll see there are things that are common to Object Studio and VisualWorks like the Process Monitor and the Parcel Manager. There are also things that are specific to Object Studio like the Global Browser and the Proxy Browser. Down here with Workspace, you have something that is common across the two, but also unique. What I mean by that is when we open this up, we're going to get a workspace that is unique to Object Studio in that everything you write in here is going to assume the Object Studio namespace and it's also going to compile with the Object Studio compiler. So for example, if I type curly brace and then one, two, three in Object Studio, this gives me an array. Now if I go into VisualWorks and you'll see I can do this if I go to the tools menu, I can bring up the VisualWorks launcher and then bring up any of the VisualWorks tools from here. So I can go here to tools workspace. If I type the same thing here, I'm not using the Object Studio namespace and the Object Studio compiler. So when I do an inspect on this, you'll notice that it tells me it doesn't know what to do because I'm using the VisualWorks compiler. So the two tools have their own individual compilers and a nomenclature. So if I'm in the Object Studio workspace, I'm going to get Object Studio behavior. If I'm in the VisualWorks workspace, I'm going to get VisualWorks behavior. So you need to kind of keep the two independent and understand what you're doing. If you're writing Object Studio code, you want to use the Object Studio workspace to make sure that all of your code is executing in the context that it will execute in when you run it. Because when you run Object Studio code, it will normally run in the Object Studio namespace and using the Object Studio compiler. To test that, you want to have the same setup. So leaving that aside for a moment, let's go down to the Tools menu again. You notice that you can bring up the text editor, the string finder, which is an interesting tool. I should say that this string finder, there is a similar tool in VisualWorks. I like this one a whole lot better because it is easier to use. You can type in a search string here, so I can type in something like, oh, I don't know, let's just type in foo. Actually, let's type in something else. Fine. We'll say halt, and instead of core.object, we'll say objectstudio.object, so you can restrict where it's looking, which is kind of a nice thing. And then I can just say search, and it's going to find all of them, and no matches were found. But you see that it's going to restrict my look here to this. So I can look in all subclasses of the specific thing I name here. I can make things a little more limited scope than the tool that's available over on the VisualWorks side. So this is kind of a nice tool and something that in my normal work with Object Studio I find highly useful. So getting rid of that for a moment, let's go down the Tools menu again. You have some specific things here, the OLA server stuff, the database notebook, a SQL window, and application definition, which I'm not going to go into right now, but there are a whole lot of things that are specific to the Object Studio tool set. If you go to the Store menu, very common between the two tools, connect to a repository, load things, unload things, and so on. 
the view menu, you can look at various options. So I can go to my option settings here and look at my desktop options. Leave that alone. You probably don't want to change the selected background color and so on, but you can do that. And help. You can get the Object Studio help. So if I bring up the help index, I'm going to get the Object Studio Online help, which is using the standard Microsoft help tools. So if you've ever used help in any Windows tool, you're already familiar with this. Now, let's skip back a little bit and go to one thing that I wanted to mention today. Let's go to Load Application. If I go here, this is going to give me a list of applications, things that I would load into Object Studio that are specific to Object Studio. So for instance, the mapping tool, things that allow me to map from Object Studio code over to databases. So I have the mapping tool base, I have the mapping tool base on Active Record, which if you're familiar with database stuff, you know what Active Record is. I can get a tutorial for this, the modeling tool, which is a UML-ish type modeling tool. I can model my class structure and then generate code, or I can take generated code from it and model back. We'll be doing a tutorial on that in the future. And a number of other things like GoDBC and so on. So you see, these are all things that are specific to Object Studio that I can load as whole scale things in this tool. So this is akin to the parcel manager in VisualWorks. The difference is, of course, these are specific to Object Studio. So they are going to come in through this little tool interface. And to load them, let's just pick one of them and say, let's go ahead and load it. So we'll pick, say, the mapping tool and we'll hit load. And what it's going to do is you'll see a little weight indicator here. And it's going to take a little bit to load it because it's going to load a number of parcels, including all the prerequisite parcels for this guy. And then eventually it'll all come in. Now, once that comes in, you'll notice that this window down here is not a transcript. This is where the icons for your tool set are. When I've loaded that, you notice that I can double click on this and it brings up the mapping tool, which again, we'll be doing a tutorial on in the future. So we'll just throw that away for now, but that's how things work. If you want the transcript in Object Studio, what you have to do is go summon it. So you go to the tools menu, you'll find one of the things you can get is the transcript and you get a little transcript window. And you notice there's already things in it. So it listed all the things I loaded out of that load application interface. So it's already been written to, I haven't been looking at it, and that's the main thing there. So if you want the transcript in Object Studio, you kind of have to summon it. It's not like the way it is in VisualWorks where it's just attached to the launcher. This is where your icons for all the things you've loaded go. So that should pretty much cover a brief overview of the tool. There's a lot more here going on. You can go here to the toolbar and you can look here. There's a little help here for all these things. Everything that is on this toolbar is also in one of the menus above. So don't feel like you have to know one or the other. You can get the hover help here, go to the menus for everything else. And that's about it for today. So until next time, have fun with Syncom Small Talk.